Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm gonna talk about the season premiere of Bosch. Obviously, a great season premiere going into the final season. Um, like I've been doing recently, I'm watching everything one episode at a time, so I uh, do keep that in mind. I will try to release all these reviews on the same day whenever I uh, finish reviewing the entire season. But regardless, um, obviously it's been four months since the season one finale. We're literally at, I mean, not season one, uh, season six finale. And um, it's New Year's Day. And I do like that it does at the very least start off very off upbeat. There's a party, you know, uh, uh, Billets is, you know, kind of, you know, going around. Uh, she's in a relationship. I'm like... When, I guess that happened in that four year period. I guess it's like that's the anniversary and everything. But they did say, like, oh, you're at the last part. I was like, how long has she been in a relationship? They didn't touch on that at all last season. I'm like, I don't remember that. Uh, so it's like, you have been, like, maybe, maybe it has been for, uh, I don't remember. This might have been earlier seasons and stuff like that, but it just, it never came up last season. So that's why I don't remember. Uh, regardless. Um, Obviously, like, Chandler's throwing the party, um, obviously, like, she, and, uh, after Irving backed out of the mayor race, she put all her resources to kind of backing Susanna, uh, for mayor, and because of that, it's like, oh, yeah, the mayor kind of owes her a favor, so, you know, so, obviously, Antonio and Maddie are there, uh, it's like, oh, where's your dad? It's like, oh, and, you know, Chandler's like, he's most likely home, like, reading a murder book by himself. It turns out he's on a date with the judge. I was like, whoa. And the judge from last season, too. I'm like, wait, is this? I was like, is this just a friendly thing? And this seemed like this intimate. And them like, crossing arms and everything. It's like, oh, no, it's super intimate. They've been dating for a while. I was like, I wonder, does Maddie know about that? Or has Maddie said anything? Like, I mean, we haven't seen Bosch do too much dating. I mean, to be fair, like, he always kind of, I mean, I guess it's not technically dating within, uh, not dating another cop. So there's not that uh, issue again but i think at the very least it, it's uh probably go it's going to turn into a complication because it's going to turn into a, a conflict of interest if they're dating uh because eventually like one of his cases might end up in her court so that or at the very least this gets used against him or something like i mean i hope this doesn't get used against him in the sense of like the cases from uh like alicia kent's case like i hope that doesn't end up being an issue like oh that kind of gets i mean I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that could easily turn into a bad thing, but obviously it's just, it's meant to be a celebratory thing, but at the same time, like, obviously you have Edgar, like, you know, drinking, even smoking. He's, he's still thinking like, right, like, I, I think for him, it's like, I did the right thing putting down Avril, but it's still like, Avril, but it's like, I, it's still weighing on him. And as it kind of showed you in the recap, he was like, his evil spirit follows me. Now, that's before um, Edgar killed him, if I believe correctly i think that was beforehand uh yeah so but i think it's like right that evil spirit kind of weighs on his conscience because it's like regardless of him being a bad man he's like i did what i had to do but still like i crossed the line i shouldn't have and now it's eating away at his soul he's trying to pretend like everything's okay he's taking a page out of harry's book pretending to be okay when he's not okay at all um, but obviously, it's like, once again, things are kind of okay and great, and then we get, like, the heartbreaking element of the story where uh, someone shows up, throws a Molotov into the um, apartment building, into particular the manager's room, and fire spreads, and there are three victims. Um, uh, a mom, um, or her friend who was eight months pregnant died as well, and as well as that mom, other mom's, like, daughter, uh, Sonia. Um and it turns out, because at first it's like, okay, please tell me we we're able to find her. But sadly, they found her on the stairs. She couldn't get out the fire exit and ended up dying from the smoke inhalation. And it's like, oh, damn, dude, that sucks. Um, no, like, there were witnesses that saw who did it, but, like, he was wearing a hood. And then it's like, all they were able to say was, like, it was a car. But now it's turning into one of those things, like, right, everyone in this neighborhood, in this apartment building, they were out in the streets, like, partying and stuff like that. And they didn't get a good look. It's like, no, everyone's quiet because they know who's responsible. They just don't want to get involved in this. Um, the sad thing is the fire uh, door that the little girl Sonia tried to go through was locked. It's like, damn it. It makes what happened to her. It's not even just tragic, like... It definitely seems like they're setting it up like there were some corners cut because the people who are trying to like clear it out of like trying to gentrify the place, at least trying to claim they're not trying to gentrify the apartment building, they're not trying to push anyone out. It's like, oh, we fought, we, um, 
we uh, pass expect inspections and saying like if there's anything wrong with that door, it had to be on the tenants. I'm like, no, that's BS. Whatever it is, like whatever it is, they need it to like get it uh, pass uh, inspection. They paid whoever it was off, like to just give them passing colors because it's like. You know, and now that's going to screw like uh, that tragedy could have been prevented. That little girl could have survived if they if that door wasn't messed up, you know. So it's just it's just a tragic, tragic situation. Um, obviously, you have uh, Bosch covering for uh, Edgar being like, oh, yeah, he's sick as a dog and kind of lazy that that. But the moment like he's with Edgar later on, it's like, right, I had a bit too much a drink. Even Bosch is kind of taking this on himself because he's like, Jerry, you've been slipping like. Ever since everything, he's like, no, he's like basically like fuck you, because Bosch is like, this is my fault, and even Edgar being like, what? It's like, yeah, like he's like, you wouldn't have done what you did if it wasn't for me, and he's like, don't try to, I make my own choices, don't take credit for everything, but I can see where Harry's coming from, why he feels that way, because for Harry, it's like, yes, I've taken things, like I've crossed certain lines, I've, there are certain lines I will never cross, but I've tiptoed that line of going into that gray area, I've taken a lot of stuff, personal stuff, into my own hands, because they even recap it, what Gar uh, Jerry had said to him last season, because he was like, you're too close to this brother, back away, and Jerry's like, would you? And that's the thing, like, Harry has been in those exact circumstances, especially when it came to his mom's case, granted, he didn't cross that line like Jerry did, but he was in that position, and so... Um, he's done that time and time again, and, you know, he's like, I'm worried that my, me, the, you know, my, who I am kind of rubbed off on you. Like, if you had never met me, maybe you wouldn't have gone down that route. But at the same time, I mean, who knows? Maybe some of that influence from Harry has rubbed off, maybe not. I, I think that has to be, uh, considered. It's, it's, um, it's an interesting development. Uh, I'm curious to see what that kind of means for their relationship over the course of the season, because, Obviously, the um, hearing and everything that's held for Jerry, uh, yes, they say that like he had poor judgment in how he executed a lot of stuff, but saying that the shoot was good, so he's not being penalized for that. Uh, instead of, like, they're basically sending him to, like, a tactics thing he has to, like, run through again. Um, it turns out, it seems like it's only for one day, but it has to be within the next 90 days, so, which he's kind of like, Jerry's like, I'd rather take the days, it's like, hey, you just have to do a one-day thing, it's fine, but the other dude, it's like, okay, like, you should be happy, you got off easy, and he's like, but for him, it's like, the dude's like, nah, I've got questions, because he doesn't, he believes, like, Jerry didn't get away with a good shoot, he believes Jerry got away with an execution, so... So he's definitely going to be looking more and more into this. And, I, you know, I think as uh, Jerry's own, you know, um, conscience starts eating away at him because, you know, obviously he's avoiding Joan because uh, she was like, hey, Jerry, you're not at the party, even though you're supposed to be here. Then at the same time, um, it's like, yeah, your kids want to see you, too. Like, so his ex is calling him and Jerry's just drowning in his own world. Will this make will now that this is kind of clear? You know, will he be better? I don't think so. I think he's still going to be stumbling a bit because it's going to eat away at him. Because even later on, Crates and Barrel are like, hey, congratulations. But then, like, Crates is like, yeah, you would think someone who just, like, went through what he went through, he'd be, like, so much happier. But it's like, he's so blasé about it. And Barrel's like, oh, it just hasn't hit him yet. He's like, maybe. And I'm like, I'm curious if that's going to turn into something. Like, it's like, it's Crates and Barrel going to start, like, are, are they going to be brought in to start looking into that for, that for whatever reason? I don't know. It's just interesting that, like, they, like, they had that, that scene feels like that's set up for something else. Um, it also seems like they're also setting up, uh, I'm curious if it's going to end up being, like, the main background story to this overarching case. Is it going to connect? Because a lot of times, a lot of stuff does end up, con like, storylines and plots obviously do connect, even, like, some of the background stuff. But there's this whole, like, Vincent dude who, like, ran a scam. It's like, oh, yeah, these bricks, these gold bricks, they're not even real, so... And then, like, Manx being like, oh, like, a man's sister about, like, you know, stopping these type of breed of criminals and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, once again, they're, like, they're setting up little plot stuff in this first episode. I'm like, I'm curious to see, like, okay, is this, like, going to be a bigger overarching storyline? Because, like, the fact is they had that scene and it makes me go, huh, I, I wonder what that means for Manx this um, season. Like, if that means anything, like, like, major and significant. But it turns out that particular dude, Vincent... Uh, Chandler's going to be his uh, lawyer, so it's like, right, she always goes for the big cases and stuff like that, so once again, we know very little about that case right now, obviously, it's other than it was a Ponzi scheme, and obviously, Chandler's like, yeah, you're going to be in a, a keep-away situation where it's like, they are going to keep you in your cell alone so that you don't have to worry about people coming after you, so what that turns into, like I said, we've only got the opening act to that, but 
Uh, speaking of Chandler, what's a dude that works for her, Alan? Uh, he was super pissy when he took those files from Maddie. He's like, oh, so how was the party? He's like, what? Uh, Chandler's party. Like, you went to it and everything. He's like, oh, she's like, it was okay. He's like, yeah. She's like, what about you? He's like, oh, I stayed at home and streamed. I wasn't invited. She's like, well, you didn't miss out on anything. It's like, he's been pissy since last season because Maddie's become uh, Chandler's, like, uh, golden girl, so, like, he kind of feels like he's kind of losing favor with her, so, he, I mean, to be fair, like, Maddie kind of showed him up, because it's like, she brought those files to him last season, being like, hey, there's some stuff missing, and he's like, uh, I'll get to it whenever, and then he ends up, she ended up going, superseding him and going to Chandler herself, she's like, well, why didn't you give it to Alan? It's like, no, I did, uh, I, I did bring it up to him, but he wanted nothing to do with it. So he's probably been in the doghouse ever since because it's like, right, Maddie, this intern found something you kind of my right hand should have found, but you didn't. So I guess that's why he's kind of a little pissy with her. But yeah, I think that's that's kind of set up of like, oh, that's going to turn into a bit of a jealousy. It's going to complicate our work environment. But uh, we'll see kind of where things go from there. Um. Obviously, there is the whole, like, we learned about uh, Sonya being labeled as Little Tamale Girl, which is like, because even Irving was like, wait, what? It's like, uh, Sonya Hernandez, uh, they called her uh, the Little uh, Tamale Girl. It's kind of, he's like, oh, and it's trending. It seems like in particular, Scott's the one that gave her that name. It's like, uh, like the moment I saw Scott, I was like, oh, you, uh, you bat. It's like, oh, uh, it's just like, I get it, you're a journalist, but like, you are the scummiest one. It's like, you've always had so many, like, somewhat, some, a few ups, but you've just been so like, bleh, the entire series, so... Um, and that, I think that led to an important conversation between Maddie and Bosch. Like he brings up the three pictures of the women he keeps. Those women, he doesn't know their name. Um, no one's come forward to identify them. There's a good chance that their murders will go unsolved. For him, it's like, he wants these women to be seen and like unknown, like, because if no one remembers them, then they, they fall between the cracks and stuff like that. That's why I think something like Sonya's situation is so important to him. Like to give her such nicknames as like, uh, the little tomato is like, no, her name is Sonya. Like to me, that's so disrespectful and so disgusting to give her that name. It's because she was delivering the tamales to the neighbors because her mom like asked her to do it. It's like, that's such a, garbage thing to do that you're like oh that's just that's just sickening you know it's just like she has a name that's what should matter like don't don't give it some because it's also like the, i guess it's also the same thing when you give like serial killers names it's just like don't do that they don't need the notoriety but also it's like don't because it's almost like you're taken away from her identity you're just like oh that's all she's gonna be labeled as and i think for bosch that also means a lot because that's these three women um, he's like, they, whatever you want to call them undocumented, whatever the case may be, they were immigrants and they fell through the cracks. These people, no one came forward for them. I don't even know their real names and their murders may never be solved. So why keep the photos? And it's because for him, it's like, because if everyone has to matter, because if no, not everyone matters, no one matters because he's also coming from the perspective of his mom was one of those people. His mom was one of those quote unquote people who didn't matter. That's why her case went so unsolved for so long until he solved it, you know? And I think because of his personal history, that's why when he sees these people who've kind of fallen through the cracks, it's like, no, like everyone needs to be seen. Everyone needs to be treated the same way, like get the proper amount of justice, because if, you know, if if not everyone counts, once again, no one counts. So I think that was just kind of a, a powerful scene in its own. And it's the messaging behind. And I, I, I think, you know, it's that the messaging itself is so hairy, you know, um, I mean, that like not in the sense of like using that as a dis Agit, but like I mean it's so bosh is what I really should have said because Harry could have been interpreted you, you get what I'm trying to say but it, like that fits Bosch's character so well like the reasoning for that you know and once again it's been a while since I've seen the earlier seasons I don't know if that ever came up about I, I think this might be the first time they ever mentioned why he has those photos maybe it has been like maybe this, this is definitely the first time he's brought it up to Maddie but I don't remember if it ever came up within the show why he keeps those photos we also end up finding out, um, I think that was, uh, yeah, it was uh, Sonya's dad because he got deported, like, last year. Uh, Harry was on the phone with him, like, trying to get in contact. Like, usually it's the coroners that do that, but I guess, like, the coroner con contacted, and obviously Bosch, well, the, uh, the father probably got in contact with uh, Bosch as well because uh, he got deported back to Mexico, so it's like, right, sorry for your loss. It's like, you weren't even able to be there, you know, when you're, it's it just, that was just kind of a sad it's just a tragic situation all around. So, um, obviously that talk with the people who were, uh, 
who uh, got the new manager involved at the, um, the that apartment place. The fact is that Bosch is on the impression like he's like it might be cynical, but he wouldn't put it above them to use take the use the gangs to their advantage and uh, get what they want to out of that place. Um, but even Jerry is like, no, nah, that's not too cynical because it's a sad possibility. Uh, what was interesting is I. I think we got introduced to uh, uh, La uh, Mayorista Gladys Arrigas. Like, I think we, like, because there was a lady at the crime scene who looked at a dude and she's like, she mouths the words, like, what the fuck? And the dude was like, it wasn't me or like, it wasn't us. So, uh, I don't know if, because she kind of runs things in that sector. Um, everything, like, because the, what was it? It's, it's a particular, was it like La Palma 13? It's like the, local gang and like everything kind of goes through her it's like he even said like oh it's the, the dude in particular uh, was his name collins was like yeah it's kind of like you ever seen the wire it's like stringer bell which i'm like oh that's so interesting because also like funny you reference that you know lance reddick being a part of this and everything which i've never seen the wire i've heard enough people talk about stuff like that. it's a show i need to go back and uh check out but um it's like yeah but she's like a banker she seems like a very legit businesswoman but she is not to be underestimated type of thing so i think i believe that was her earlier in the episode so it's like was that like some people in her payroll that would like maybe some people in like under her or maybe part like it's like all everyone kind of answers to her to some extent so i think like uh, the other the gang, like I said, she doesn't necessarily lead that gang, but she's in business with them. Like everything kind of circles back to her. But I think like whoever, either the higher ups of that gang weren't aware of what went down because those could have been like some lower members that just like um, got paid by this the, the company that like implanted the manager and stuff like that. Because he's the one that had called about um, the uh, gangs and trying to like they're trying to remove all their drug dealers to make it a better place so they can like remodel and kind of work on everything. Um, sadly, the manager did die. Apparently, he, like, had a stroke, uh, like, an hour before Harry got there. It's like, if Jerry wasn't on his BS, as, you know, uh, Bosch was kind of saying, it was like, you could have been there to kind of, like, talk to him before he potentially died and stuff like that. So, it's like, because of that, we lost a really good lead, so... I brought him up earlier. There is a whole Irving thing. There's a lot going on with Irving. It seems like, uh, just based on the size and everything, it seemed like him and, um his wife's uh baby uh came out prematurely i mean it has been four months she wasn't even uh june wasn't even showing last season so i think the baby was born prematurely and she's more positive about it but irving's just kind of like very like worried and pessimistic about it but she believes like no everything's gonna work out you're like i hope it does um so irving's got that to deal with he's getting a cold shoulder not only from Jen, because it's like, right, his his bailing out of the uh, mayoral race, it's like, right, you didn't contact me, and when I did try to call you, you kind of ignored me. It's like a lot was going on at the time. I was being blackmailed by that, uh, the the car czar, or the czar car. No, I think it was the car czar, um, and everything. So, yeah, I don't know if he ever really explained that to Jen, but it's also like, why does it seem like the mayor is kind of giving me the cold shoulder? And she's like, well, he's like, I did kind of give, like, help her get the election. No, she did on her own. He's like, I like to beg, I beg to differ. And it's like, well, I'll talk about, talk to the mayor. It's like, well, Jen's not necessarily in your corner anymore. Because it's like, right, you bounced back. You got this new job and everything. But it's like, I think a lot of shade is getting thrown Irving's way. And it's like, well, I don't think she's going to be too fond of me with my my second term because it's like maybe she wants someone Latino to kind of uh, step into the play, not want anyone connected to Romas's, um uh, uh, time frame because it's also like it's probably like in her mind it's probably like I gotta let go of the old guard and sadly Irving you're part of that old guard to bring in the new guard to lead everything in the right direction so we'll kind of have to see where things kind of go on that front a lot of interesting things just immediately getting dropped in the premiere. Like, all right, you see a lot of plot threads are setting up, and it's just it just kind of gets your mind wondering about how everything's going to play out and ultimately where, what's going to connect, what's just going to be its own storyline, like how they're going to all affect us and how everything's going to affect each other in this final season. Um, yeah, just this was the starting mark, and it's going to be interesting to see uh, where all this ends up taking us going forward, uh, like I said, into the next episode. But uh, really, that's all I want to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live like to the fullest, enjoy it, good day, and goodbye.